Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be continuing our discussion about Dead Like Me. We're gonna be discussing episode eight. This episode is called A Cook. Now this episode is a really big lore one. We'll just kind of start at the top and work our way through. This episode begins with a previous arc where there were some issues with the cook at Der Waffle House and we learn the cook's name. His name is Angus. His last name is also Cook. He is having some trouble. He got caught up in a pyramid scheme and he's really pressed on money. And Rube connects with this guy, which goes against everything that Rube normally believes in. Normally Rube is very much about staying on the fringe and not getting connected with people. We have this point where Rube gets Angus's name and he's gonna be a target to take their soul. And it kind of reminds Rube of why you stay on the fringe. During Georgia's reap, she encounters this old lady who has a dog. And when she takes her soul, this woman refuses to leave until matters with her dog are resolved. And this is the first time where we've seen a soul just outright refuse to go. Normally the souls are just very happy, but this time she had some unfinished business. She needed her dog taken care of and she wasn't gonna go anywhere until that happened. This dog's name is JD. Georgia takes it back to Der Waffle House. And this is when Rube has his moment where he's like, don't get connected with these people. You don't owe them anything. Now I do have to point out that there is a slight, a rather major plot hole in this episode. And that is from the time that Georgia takes the old lady's soul and takes JD away, to the time that she goes to Dare Waffle House, there is an entire day passed because Georgia's hair and costume have changed, as well as Rube got the instructions of who were the next batch of people whose souls needed to be taken. This is important because later on, on let's say this is day two, later on in day two, Daisy will not let Georgia into the apartment with JD because she says that she's got expensive things and she doesn't want the dog to shed on her nice clothes. She also is allergic to dogs and she doesn't want JD staying the night. And what is important about that moment is that between day one and two, Georgia slept somewhere. Theoretically, she slept in her own home. So that conversation with Daisy should have happened in between night one and day two and it happened on night two. So that's kind of a big plot hole that they missed and I don't think anybody necessarily thought about it. So then when Rube finally does his reap and he takes Angus's soul, Angus does the same thing that Mrs. Todd earlier in the episode did is that Angus doesn't leave. He doesn't go anywhere, he sticks around. Rube ends up volunteering to be the unofficial chef at Dare Waffle House until they can find a replacement and Angus sticks around to help Rube and kind of train him on how to do everything. And it seems like he has some type of ulterior motive because Angus doesn't end up leaving and going to his light until Rube kind of makes this assertion and fights and, and pushes back against a guest in Dare Waffle House, which is something that Rube did a lot. Rube would often send food back and say, I don't like it this way. I want it prepared differently. And a guest did the exact same thing to Rube. And when Rube pushed back, I think Angus thought, okay, now he knows how this feels and now I'm okay to go. And his unfinished business was almost teaching Rube a lesson. It's interesting because this is now the second time in the course of one episode where a soul refuses to leave and then something gets resolved among them and then they go. So we'll go back to the point of George not being allowed to sleep in her own house because of Daisy. So she ends up going and staying with Mason. That doesn't really work out very well. She goes to work the next day and Dolores offers for her to stay at her house. So Millie stays the night at Dolores' place and finds out that Dolores has this website called Getting Things Done with Dolores, which is this kind of weird website where people can go and watch her do things, like clean her house and switch out the liners in her counter or, you know, fold laundry. Dolores makes a comment that she wanted to call it her big website, but she didn't want to attract people who had a fascination for big things and she specifically makes this gesture and I think that's fascinating that probably about four inches maybe a little bit less than that is what Dolores finds substantial and then we get a really big point for Georgia where she then goes in the next morning to their Waffle House and she confronts Daisy and she basically tells her like 
you are not the only person on this earth. There are other human beings and I am one of them and you're not gonna push me around. And this is really big because for the last couple episodes, George has just let Daisy push her around and do what she wants because she sees Daisy as this really big personality and doesn't take herself seriously. And this is something that was important for her to establish these boundaries in their relationship. This is really huge for Georgia. So this episode resolves itself by Georgia bringing JD back to the last house and leaving JD as a gift for Reggie because Georgia doesn't think she's gonna be able to take care of him very well. She explains earlier in the episode that she's had problems taking care of pets and she knows that Reggie's alone and Reggie's sad. She's seen that over the last couple episodes of spying on her sister, that things are not quite right at home and that things are certainly not right with the family dynamic and they need something. And JD, is that something that she decides to give to them? It's a really sweet moment because Reggie immediately connects to the dog. Reggie probably in her heart thinks, Georgia left this for me. So I think that's why she has such a deep connection with the dog right away. So my favorite quotes from this episode, there's two of them. One of them is a Dolores quote, it's a shocker. And one of them is a Daisy quote, also a shock. My favorite quote from Dolores as the gay icon status that I am gifting upon her is she is talking to Millie and about her, her small apartment. And she mentions that she likes to see every inch as an opportunity. And then my favorite quote from Daisy from this episode is Mason is talking to her about her helping him out with an advertisement that he wants to do. And she says, yeah, I don't see that happening. I love to quote that line. I think it's fabulous. That has been the discussion about this episode. Thank you so much. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.